everybody who's part of the game is here tonight at Christopher Fields for this All-American Showdown. Gigantic crowd assembled, various college and club team logos and colors decorating the bleachers. And we've got a great lineup of talent coming at you on this All-American Showcase at the Triple Crown Sparkler and Fireworks Fast Pitch Softball. That's just an extravaganza. That's all you can call it. More than a tournament. Jaden Chestnut, part of the home team tonight. The blue team has been assigned the home designation. And Jaden Chestnut will pitch to start things off. Place for the Game Time Stars Gold out of Oklahoma. Chestnut in the circle. And Jaden pitches to Olivia Gott. Olivia will catch. One of the great things about this All-American game is the fact that the pitchers and catchers from different teams have probably never met before tonight. They've got to figure it out and throw a solid inning against great hitters. I feel like that's probably the most difficult part of this All-American game and the most or the toughest position that you can play right now, I think, in this game is back behind the plate and trying to figure out your pitcher. Leadoff batter for the red team is Allison McGovern of TC Tremors Gold. Congratulations to all of the All-Americans selected to play in tonight's game. It was a random assignment in the batting order. So Allison McGovern drew what I think she probably believes is the long straw. <laughs> she got the good draw of being leadoff in the 30 batter order. Allison out of Binghamton, New York. TC Tremors Gold, her club team. She wanted to give a shout out to her father, who passed a little over a year ago, Tom McGovern, that ball's popped up and caught for an out. We want to make sure we get that mentioned for Allison. She said, hey, a shout out to my dad. He passed away on June 24 for a battle with throat cancer. Tom McGovern, you're remembered by your daughter as she plays in this opportunity. And mom, Bunny, sister Leah, and Tana, they're all here in Colorado watching Allison play in this All-American game. She pops out, out number one, and that brings Ashley Morris of Arizona Storm to the plate. Ball slapped to a third and a great play. A couple outs recorded at third base. Defensively strong. Leah Martinez of the Firecrackers. Quick reactions there, getting all of her length jumping up and extending that arm to just steal that hit. Well struck ball there by Morris. Martinez playing third base. She's going to get a couple of innings. Pretty much all the players get two defensive innings during this seven inning ball game. And Malia Martinez plays for the Firecrackers Rico. She is at third base now. She's gotten the first two balls toward her and made a couple of outs. And that brings the red team, Hannah Dossett, Louisville Lady Sluggers. This one again to third and just a little too tall. Going to try to throw, but safe at first. First base hit of all American game, Hannah Dossett on base. Getting it off the tip of the glove of the defender at third, Olivia Martinez. This one a little bit more tricky because it comes off the bat a little bit jammed. So you're so used to having those quick reactions as a third baseman, like in the line drive that she caught before. But that time, a little bit harder to judge the jump. Just got her. Nice inning for Jaden Chestnut to this point. She's got a runner on now. Has to finish off the top of the first. Jaden Chestnut of Mustang, Oklahoma, the pitcher. And Tierra Follow is the batter. Tierra batting in number four spot. Plays for Firecrackers Brashear. Interesting dynamic here. Her teammate, Ivy Davis from Firecrackers Brashear, is playing shortstop against her right now. Against this number four batter, Tierra Follow. And then Jane Chestnut out there in the circle. There's a, a pass ball is going to advance, but I love the fact she said she has a photographic memory, something cool, unique, strange about her. If I'm a pitcher, I want a photographic memory to remember what pitch the hitter hit the last time, to remember exactly where I need to do or what I need to do against her, the scattering report, have that photographic memory to be able to draw upon. That would be useful. Photographic memory and a short memory, too, often plays <laughs> off swing and a strike swinging 63 miles per hour, one and one count. The batter, Tierra Follow, facing Starting pitcher Jaden Chestnut follow right there. Where's the number 45 for her late grandma's church at 45th and Z Street? Tierra from San Diego. Her parents were married at that church. Tierra was baptized at that church. Where's that 45 to recognize a grandma in her church, the First Simone Christian Church of San Diego. A strikeout pitched 
by Jaden Chestnut. One runner aboard, but nothing in the top for Team Red. Team Blue bats next. Seven inning game. The red team does not score at the top of the first stand. The blue team now bats. Well, the hashtag I play TCS. It's hot right now. Sparkler and fireworks going on, trending across social media. Get in the game. Use hashtag I play TCS. Triple Crown Sports presents the Sparkler and Fireworks and this All American game on CBS Sports Network. The pitcher in the bottom of the first from the Tennessee Fury, Kalen Arnold. And among other cool things about Kalen Arnold, her favorite fast pitch player is you, my partner Amanda Scarborough. <laughs> See your name on the paper, it's kind of cool, but also I love the fact, why do you play fast pitch? Well, because she doesn't want to play slow pitch. So, I mean, I guess that's a good enough reason to do it. I had to go play at University of Tennessee just a, just a year. It's Kaylin Arnold from Fury Platinum. That's the F on the front of her shirt. Fury Platinum out of Tennessee. Christy made the trip with her to Colorado. Favorite movie, Gone with the Wind. And oh yeah, I forgot to mention favorite fast pitch player, Amanda Scarborough. <laughs> I might just say that all inning long. Making it blush. <laughs> Swing and a strike, a leadoff batter for the blue team from the Conklin Raiders is Aaliyah Wade. Taylor Arnold. Like most of the pitchers tonight, scheduled to throw one inning. This ball is pushed down the first baseline. Nice play at first. Wade gave it a pretty good try, but got to the glove and the out made at first. Ashley Doyle playing defense. Yeah, Doyle, the lefty, makes a decision to backhand this. Don't let it roll foul. Picks it up right in front of that runner. Nice and easy tag. So again, the pitchers slated generally for one inning. There are a couple of pitchers who will throw two. Tonight. That'll be later in the game. But for the most part, when you see a pitcher tonight, you're going to see him quick, and they're going to be going 63 miles per hour from Kayla Normal. She's pitching to Anna Epling for catcher. Ashley Doyle at first. Aubrey Leach at second. Berkeley Callip plays third base. Alexis Perry at short. Uh, Megan Harrison left. Jordan Borbrink in center. Right for his Bailey Baldwin foul ball. And 1 1 count to the second batter in the order, Amber Surratt. Cool thing about Kaylin Arnold, the pitcher, and then Aubrey Leach over at second base, both headed towards Knoxville, Tennessee. Aubrey Leach is going to be there in just a couple of months, and then Kaylin Arnold be about a year and a month. Chopped foul by Amber Surrett from Spring, Texas, the batter. She fouls that off for a 2 2 count. What do you know about uh, sudden impact? Out of Texas. Strong team. It, it, it's interesting how there were two impact teams that kind of formed whenever I was playing. There was impact gold and there was sudden impact. They kind of made their own team probably back early 2000s, late 90s. Watch that pitch sail wide. A full count now. 2015 grad. Congratulations on high school graduation to Amber. LSU awaits. The pitch awaits. Amber pretty good at that here. Seeing a lot of pitches. Like how her favorite website is Nike.com. 
Not any kind of social media, but she's there for the shoes, the apparel, the <laughs> yep. working out. More gear. More athletic information. Another 3-2 pitch. This is sent towards center on the big red, white, and blue star out in center field. That's caught. And out number two put on the board in the glove of Jordan Wolverine. talking about you being the choice of uh, favorite player already on one of these biography sheets. And Amber Serena just popped out her favorite player, Jessica Mendoza, who's roaming around the park. Mm -hmm. That's one of the great things about this is so many of those players and those those who came before these current young players get ready to to college, they're right here and accessible and available for these young players to get information, just to at least personalize it a little bit, realize, hey, these are human beings who live yeah. lives. And, do the same kind of things I do. Well, this is a place to be if you're any way, shape, or form involved in softball. Emily Erickson chops it softly towards short, and the play is made at shortstop. Alexis Perry picked it up through to Ashley Doyle at first, a clean inning for Kaylin Arnold. One inning played, no score in the All-American game. Yeah. Well last, last time I checked, I just Googled this last night. If you don't score runs, you don't win. You know that? <laughs> and guess what? Here's the second thing I Googled last night. <laughs> No score after one inning in the All-American game. Here comes the second inning with red batting. Blue playing defense. And red first base bag sitting there waiting for a runner. GH Pin Company, the official trading pin partner of Triple Crown Sports. Proud sponsor of the Triple Crown Sportsmanship Program. A family business that treats you like family. GHPins.com. GHPins.com. Thanks to GH Pins and all of our partners for helping present Triple Crown Fast Pitch Softball on CBS Sports Network. The pitcher for the Top of the second inning from TXFC out of Spring, Texas, Ania Williams. Get to play alongside her teammate over there at third base, Christina Bardwell. Committed, or she's going to Texas. Ania Williams, one of the few players to sport the full ball cap. Mm -hmm. I like it when they go back to the old ball cap style, but didn't miss the bow. Kept, <laughs> yeah. kept that involved. So it's a Nia Williams, 2015 grad, and head off to Lawrence. And Haley Donaldson of TC Stars Gold out of Fort Collins. Haley, a talent. Nebraska is. In her future for collegiate play. One and two count to Donaldson. Ania Williams, the pitcher, holding that arm up. She gets asked to flex frequently. <laughs> Has bigger muscles than a lot of guys at her school, she told us. From the Houston area, from Spring, Texas. She hit her first home run. She started crying, did Ania Williams. She's pitching now. Haley Donaldson fights that off. The thing about Ania is that she's a two way player. Pitches, she's able to hit. Haley Donaldson, a 2016 grad, so getting ready for her senior year. And it's Lincoln, Nebraska for college days for Haley. Fouls another pitch off. I've had the uh, good fortune living in Fort Collins and watching Haley play for a block of years now. She came on the scene young and was a, a strong talent early. Her uncle Jeff Donaldson was a safety in the NFL for the Chiefs, the Falcons, the Oilers, played 10 years. Her brother Hunter plays baseball at Metro State in Denver. Haley carrying on the family tradition. Parents Kim and John, some of the better folks in Fort Collins, Colorado. 
Another uh, player, Haley, who said her favorite player, Lauren Chamberlain. What a mark Lauren has made on the game. Yeah, there's several of those listed, especially in the game that we had earlier, Glory and Firecrackers. 2-2 pitch. Donaldson is fouling some stuff away, just spoiling, spoiling, and spoiling some more off of Ania Williams. Haley Donaldson hit back-to-back -back grand slams on the 16-year-old TC Stars team. Consecutive at-bats. Grand slam, grand slam. She's worked herself to a full count here, watching that 51-mile-per-hour pitch ride up and out. Yeah, Williams has had to throw a little bit of everything. Got with her curveball, mixed in a screwball, trying to throw that change up and mix it in the mix, but unable to throw it for a strike. And it is the payoff, and Donaldson works herself a walk. So a runner on board for the offensive effort here. Haley Donaldson on Taylor Lynch will bat next, and let's jump back down in the fray with Amanda Free. So I grabbed Kaylin Arnold, who just finished throwing three up, three down to the bottom of the first inning for her team. Kaylin's going to the University of Tennessee in two years. How much fun is it to watch them in the postseason and collegiate play and then know that you're going to be a part of that program? Oh, my gosh, it's so awesome. I mean, I've been watching them, you know, since I was little a little um, and uh, so and I only live about 15 minutes away from the college so I go to home games all the time and it's it's really cool like knowing the girls and um, like you know watching them play and watching them succeed and your favorite player you listed is Amanda Scarborough tell us a little something about why she's your favorite player I just she like you know Normally you see like pitchers like Monica Abbott and like Jenny Finch who are just super, super like tall and she's like, you know, normal size and like and she can throw like crazy hard and awesome and so it's, I just look up to her and I mean like I, every when I need help like on something or like looking for drills, I always go and watch her videos and do stuff like that. I just think she's great. <laughs> we think she's great too, and there you go, Amanda, you live on. Hey Amanda Amanda <laughs> Freed. Amanda Freed. Can you send Kaylin up to the booth, please? Go ahead and send Kaylin up here. Let her say hi to <laughs> let her say hi to Amanda Scarborough up here in the booth. Let's There's get let's get Kaylin up here. Aw, such sweet comments. There's and as you can tell, I'm a little bit shorter. It's <laughs> five five, not even five six. There you are, winding it up. Thanks, guys. Texas Living for the short people, short pitchers. Now they didn't have video back then, so this is all still photos. That's all we had. Gotta no, love the faces. No video. No moving pictures in, the, in them <laughs> days. <laughs> uh, congratulations on the uh, Hall of Fame induction to Texas A&M mm -hmm. College Station. A great part of your background, obviously, your, your development, your growth, and your experience in the game, and beyond that, obviously. Yeah, yeah, fun to attach the links of the game. Now Kaylin Arnold's just walked up to the booth saying hi to Amanda Scarborough. That's pretty cool. Kaylin, uh, nice pitching. Good job. We had a great soft slap from Taylor Lynch. She's on at first base. Lynch at first. Haley Donaldson to second. Ashley Doyle with a 2-2 count and a strikeout pitch. Big pitch there. Important one for Ania Williams getting it out. Doyle strikes out. One away. Well done by Ania Williams. Riding the ball down and away. Moving away a little bit. Frozer. And Ashley Doyle of Oregon Blaze Gold is an out. Kaylee Clifton now. Game time stars gold is in the box. That Taylor Lynch soft slap a moment ago that got her on base with the hustle down the line. Foul ball off the bat of Clifton. For Taylor Lynch now on the night, she's uh, <laughs> four for four with a walk and three runs scored. She was three for three with a walk three singles in our National Power Showdown just about an hour yeah. or so ago on CBS Sports Network. And then Lynch also playing the All-American game. Singles with the short game. This ball popped. Not a lot of foul ground here at Christopher Fields and not quite enough to get back and find it. The catcher, Lauren Buchanan, went back and took a look. It's Buchanan catching Ania Williams. At first base is Jade Gondara. It's Bailey Klingler at second base, Christina Bardwell at third, shortstop is Asia Weber. In left field, Carly Hamilton, center fielder is Aaliyah Wade, and in right field is Sydney Springfield. That's the defense here. At the top of the second for the blue team. This pitch on 0 2 count just inside for a 1 2. Frank Covington from Colorado Springs, our plate umpire. Dave Grandell of Phoenix at first, and Doug Livingston also of Phoenix at third base. Congratulations to our three umpire crew being selected for this All-American game. 2-2 now as a 62-mile-per-hour pitch rides up and in. 
Ania Williams continues to work here against an offensive surge from the red team. And on a foul ball, you know, there's so many teams, there's so many players out there who are in the stands, but why are they scrambling from a fly ball? Shouldn't they be trying to plan underneath that, get, get their eyes underneath it? Instead, they're running from it, but I guess that's what happen, happens when you don't have a glove. Well, it's a tough sun angle over there for the fans. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give them uh, yeah. excuses. They were, yeah, they lost, they it, lost in it in the sun. They yeah, had no definitely. gloves to shield their eyes with. <laughs> now, do you do the shove, uh, the, the shove, the, the uh, shield your eyes with the glove or the bare hand? I did the hand. Bare? Yeah, okay. bare I know Michelle, hand. Michelle Smith is big on, she's talked about it before at these games, mm -hmm. about not using the glove. She doesn't like the dynamics of that. She thinks the bare hand mm -hmm. may be the way to go. Yeah, I, I just, I don't know, I want to, catch the ball with my glove and if that's like I don't know multitasking with your glove <laughs> hand. Fair enough. <laughs> Nia Williams steps behind the circle and reminds the defense that there is one out. Batter 2-2 two -two count is Kaylee Clifton. She'll be followed by Aubrey Leach of Sudden Impact Gold and then Alex Dufour of TC Stars Gold behind Leach. Foul ball blasted wide left side. If you're a pitcher in one of these innings, I feel like the best thing that you can do is just go out and throw your strengths, whatever it is. Just keep pounding that strength because none of these hitters are going to have that information on you to know if your best pitch is a curveball or a rise ball, but just go in there and trust your best stuff. Clifton, like Haley Donaldson earlier in the inning, leading off the inning, working herself into a good count. 2-2 now after some foul offs. Three balls, two strikes. This game is always kind of like the Autobahn. Once it gets going, this thing just sails. It's a full house, a packed house of talent. There's a strikeout pitch. Clifton thought it was out of the zone. Strikeout, second strikeout of the inning, recorded by Williams. Going up and in with a screwball. Gets a little bit up, but a nice placement. And we get that as a, as a the strike call, then nice place up, or a nice placement of it up and in on the hands. All-American game, you would imagine big strike zone. Lots of swinging going on. Strike one to Aubrey Leach of Texas Sudden Impact Gold. <laughs> 2015 USA Today All USA First Team and a 2014 NFCA First Team All American. Aubrey Leach sends this to a left diving try, short hop pickup, throw coming to the plate. Safe at the plate is Donaldson out at third on the trail follow is Taylor Lynch, but that run crosses the plate. The red team on the board on the single from Aubrey Leach and RBI, and it's 1-0 red. Ball knocked to left field. No out at the plate. Throwback is good for an out at third. Out in left field, that's Carly Hamilton on the D. Pace game. Even that little thing can't keep up with the speed of this deal. Get out of there. Bunny's enjoying. Oh, that's not an exit. Bunny's out there enjoying the All American game with an up close view from Bonet in the bottom of the second. Mira Nelson is the scheduled pitcher. A nice 
19 on the jersey. That's seven on our original ledger, but and for Bonet, you know, you got 60 players working through here. We'll just be honest right now. There's a <laughs> lot of traffic going on, yeah. and players we haven't had a chance to see before. Carson Gordon from Gold Coast Hurricanes. That's a program we've seen frequently on these televised games at Triple Crown Sports events. A high-quality program out of South Florida. Carson Gordon starts off the bottom of the second for the blue team. Now down 1-0. Samira Nelson pitching to Berkeley Faulkner behind the plate. Alexis Allen plays first base. Mallory Belknap at second. Alyssa DiCarlo at third. Taylor Ellis plays short. The outfield, Brianna Hogan in left. Toby Fortenberry in center. And Alex Dufour in right. Out of the way for Carson Gordon. So that first inning for the blue team, nobody reached at a ground out, a pop up and a ground out. Three up, three down in the bottom of one. Florida State is where Carson Gordon is headed. And her favorite player, Lacey Waldrop. Lacey, the senior class award winner this year. Always love that. It's one of my favorite awards in college sports. National player of the year, her junior year. Carson Gordon out of Miami. Heading up to the other side of the state. And Tallahassee. Dad played football in Fort Lewis, at Fort Lewis College in Durango, Colorado. So Tom, her father, has spent some time in this same state where Carson is now being featured in this All-American game. And her dad, Tom, who went to school in Durango, Colorado, is also here on the trip. And Gordon with a 2 2 pitch coming and a strikeout pitch. Rear Nelson dials the, the inside portion of the plate, paints it for out number one. Yeah, this umpire likes that up and in part of the zone, and a lot of these hitters are trained to see the ball down, and it just has good late break to it that just busts her up inside and just catches the strike zone. Successful first batter retired, Isabella. Jankowski takes a strike at 65 miles per hour. Humming it up there pretty firmly, Nelson. Isabella or Bella. For those who know her well. Goes for the Firecrackers, Hardy. Massachusetts bouncer takes a tough hop over Alexis Allen's glove at first and uh, Hustle down the line and a base hit on a tough bouncer. Jankowski is on. First runner for the Blue All American team. A hit well to the other side of the field on the ground, but it takes that weird hop right over Allen's glove. It's one of those you just have to chalk up is, oh wow, if you're a fielder out there, that's pretty tough. Yeah, how much you can do with that. It's going to be a miraculous hand-eye play. If you stop it, everybody freaks out. If you don't, it's, didn't expect anything on that. Ball is blooped over the infield defense, and Bailey Klingler of Texas Aces Express has a single back-to-back -back base hits for the Blue All-American team. Jankowski now at second, and Bailey Klingler on at first base with Christina Inouye from Firecrackers Rico. We saw Christina in our earlier game today. And she, uh, among other things, hit a home run. She was three for four with a couple of singles, a long ball, three RBI, and Christina swinging a hot bat. She's in there with two All-American teammates on board. Swinging first pitch, played it short over to third. Going the other way, and taking out on the force is Jankowski at third. Nice play at shortstop to get that out. Yeah, this is not an easy play, especially with the way that this field is playing right now, just to trust yourself to stay down on that ball, not knowing if it's going to come up and take a bad hop. Understanding you have a force at third, being able to make that play. And it's a nice play there by Taylor Ellis, a shortstop. Taylor Ellis. Nicely done. Texas rapid fire goal for her team. And Taylor threw that over the third to Alyssa DiCarlo. Brings Lauren Buchanan of Mackensite Storm out of the Kansas City area. And followed by Mary Cranick of Texas Aces. If an out's not recorded here on this batter. Bring Mary to the plate. 
Hackensites program. Mike McFarland and Kevin Seitzer, a couple of big leaguers who run the baseball and softball juggernaut in the Midwest. Slow roll to third. Well done. The defense is firm for the Red All American team. Alyssa DiCarlo plays it across to Alexis Allen. Scores 1 0 after 2 in the Spark of Fireworks All American game. Two innings played and the Red All-American team leads it 1-0. Five hits between the two teams through, through those first two innings. Gatorade knows that every victory starts from within. Within is the determination to come up big when it matters most. But it also takes training and fuel. Win from within. The Triple Crown Sparkler and Fireworks are fueled by Gatorade. Thanks to Gatorade supporting the endeavors of these players on the field and the broadcast effort from Sparkler and Fireworks. Shelby McGlawn of Texas Sudden Impact Gold will play at Baylor in a couple of years, but she's a 2017 grad, just about to start her junior year. Shelby is committed to play at Baylor. She'll pitch. Says her favorite position, though, is outfield. <laughs> a little dagger to my heart right there. <laughs> you need to see that. Uh, there's something else I like about number 34 right there in the yellow and blue in the circle. She sends in her first pitch. That is a pullback bunt and a ball. Shelby McGlon, uh, nicknamed Goose, she said her hobby, eating Oreos. She loves Oreos and Bryce Harper. Mm -hmm. And he once favored in one of her tweets, Bryce Harper did. It was a big deal. No, that is a huge deal. Yeah. And that's fouled off and a 1 1 count. Speaking of Bryce Harper and the way that. The, Youth development crosses over. Bryce was featured in Triple Crown television games for four consecutive years up in Steamboat Springs in the Triple Crown Baseball World Series when he was 11, 12, 13, and 14. I did play by play on the games up there when That's cool. Bryce was just, uh, well, he was a man then. Uh, and he was hitting balls up in the altitude of Steamboat when he was 12 years old. I remember he hit a home run that they measured about 355. And uh, it was all getting started then. You, you knew there was something special. Wow. And it was clear to see. And I'll be honest, when I was doing those games, I mainly hoped he didn't hit the ball at anybody. And I'm not joking. I mean, you just hoped he didn't hit it at somebody because he hit the ball so hard. You're playing on 70 foot bags and uh, not a lot of time to react to a guy hitting rockets like that. This ball's slapped to the left, well slapped, but finds its way to a glove. That was Alex Dufour of TC Stars Gold, a pretty good AB, but she is a line out victim to start the top of the third. A yeah, good barrel to the ball, just played well there by Mary. Mary Cranick, who will lead off. In the bottom of this inning, she'll be the first batter up for the blue team. She plays defense in left. Kranick makes that catch. She's joined in the outfield here by Jade Gandara and Miranda Price, who's in right, Jade in center. Shelby McGlone pitching to Emily Erickson, Sydney Springfield at first, Christina Inouye at second, Carson Gordon at third, Amber Charette at short. And that bunny never found its way out of the fence. It's a majestic bunny <laughs> shot. He just juked Amber Surratt there at shortstop. He said, you know, I'm an All-American, too. Look at my stuff. Yeah, that's actually a remote control bunny that the uh, <laughs> tournament deploys just to add some fun. They have everything here. Hmm. What are we going to do with that? Dave Grandel, our first base umpire, is hurting, not hurting, but hurting the bunny. Yeah, there's gaps out there. That's where I'd go, bunny. Head down that line. Hey, I want to ask you, look at that foul line, the red, white, and blue foul mm -hmm. line. So is the red foul? No, that... Well, yeah. Or you think that's the edge? Is that's the white? Foul. Okay, so the white's fair. Still needs to touch some white. It's going to be a tough call down there to yeah. see if it hit. <laughs> Only red. Now the bunny's loose out there behind the fans in the outfield. And a round of applause from the fun-loving crowd. 
smiles on the faces of the players who enjoy the little bunny rodeo here in Colorado. And we're back to All-American softball action. Nobody on base with one away. Top of the third inning. Mallory Belknap. Easy hot shots, Arizona. Two-time badminton state champion. Badminton state champion. That's pretty cool. It's funny if you if you haven't played that game before, you know, if you, you when you play that, it's actually a blast. Like, you know, I don't know how many people have had a chance to do that, but there's a state champion, two times state mm -hmm. champion in the box right now. Flat, tough bounce at third. Nice play. A tough hop that came mm -hmm. popping up and good enough to make it happen. Carson Gordon at third base plays defense. That's the thing that you're noticing about these defensive plays, especially on the left side of the infield so far in this game, is that these infielders are really going up and attacking. They're being aggressive. They're attacking the ground ball and not letting these bad hops play them. Now Alexis Allen, who plays for Firecrackers Rico. We saw her earlier today. Here's a look at that last bounce and the Carson Gordon play on it. You can see how quickly she's going to get on top of it and just has a bad hop, but is able to just recognize it right away and keep the ball in front of her and transfer the ball to make a play. One of the things I find myself saying to young players that I coach is stay but below the ball. A lot of them want to work high and then try yep. to shoot back down. She did a great job of staying below that ball when it hopped up. She played it back up toward her shoulders. Pretty textbook. Mm -hmm. Wish I could get a copy of that and show that to all my guys. Ground ball, shortstop Allen grounds out in a clean inning. Well thrown by Shelby McGlawn. The shortstop Amber Surrett made the play across the Sydney Springfield and top of the third ends with nothing happening for the All-American Red team. Allen grounds it out. Still a 1-0 lead for the Red as we go to the bottom of the third. A seven inning game. We'll play all seven regardless of the score. So if the home team's ahead in the bottom of the seventh, we still play that bottom of the seventh because it's a showcase. Somebody's got their assignment that inning to do what they came here to do. So we'll play a full seven. Amanda Scarborough is next to me. I'm Thad Anderson. And let's check back in with Amanda Freed. Yeah, so down here in the field, obviously, we've got a game going on with some all-stars, some all-Americans who's gonna, who are going to go on and play at the next level. But their coaching staffs in the dugout consists of 12 collegiate coaches who are here to help them out, help them give a couple of extra tips going on to the next level. Over 175 years of combined coaching experience between these two dugouts. I'd say it's a pretty good opportunity for these girls to learn a thing or two before they head out onto the next level. We saw Tim Speakman with the Ave Maria shirt on. And yeah, we want to say thanks and a great storyline you bring into us, Amanda Freed, with uh, the, these college coaches out here. And it's Steve Kinnett on the blue team side. Steve Kinnett of Colby Community College, Ed Key from Dakota Wesleyan, Mark Matthews of Peru State, Tommy Ramos of Midland College, Janice Esses of Bethany College, and Kristen Coulter of Goshen College. Six coaches on each side. That sounds like a lot, but there's 30 players in the dugout, so it's all about ratios. <laughs> and the red team coached by Jim Farrell of Cornerstone University, Nicole Dixon of Tyler Junior College, Daryl Holting of Kansas Wesleyan, Tim Speakman of Ave Maria, Melissa Wood of Georgia Highlands, and Beth Wade of Gulf Coast State College. Kind of from all over, just like the players. Yeah. Into the bottom of the third we go. Blue team batting. This ball is popped, shallow, running in, catching it where the dirt meets the grass. Out number one at the bottom of the third is chalked up. Mary Cranick of Texas Aces goals pop that up. And coming in from Left field making the play was Jordan Vorbrink. <laughs> Hannah Dossett doing the catching this inning. And Maribeth Gorsuch is our pitcher. Pitch. Sails in and down, 62 miles per hour, 1-1 one, one count. Reagan Rogers of Game Time Stars Gold, not her first time on television. She's been in one of these Sparkler Fireworks TV games as a 16-year-old with her Game Time Stars team in a 16-year-old Power Pool Championship, Reagan Rogers batting. 2-1 count. Beth 
Gorsuch sends the pitch in, and it's fouled away by Reagan Rogers. And here's a look back at two years ago. Reagan now playing at the 18-year-old level. This was 16-year-old level in the 16-year-old Power Pool Championship game time. Oklahoma playing the Tennessee Fury. She had already had one base hit in the first inning, and this was in the fourth inning, and it was gone. Reagan Rogers listed that as one of her claims to fame, a televised home run when she was playing 16-year-old ball for the game time stars. And that was the blast. She sailed in Lauren Chamberlain style, yeah. coming down the third baseline. Turned out that was the only run her team scored in that game, losing 7-1 to Tennessee Fury. But a fine memory for this batter, who's got another memory with a solid single in the All-American game. Another good at bat, fighting off some pitches, getting herself an opportunity single for Reagan Rogers. Sitting back on an off-speed pitch. It's pretty much at her letters, but she keeps her hands back and is able to drive this ball to the left side of the field. Nice piece of hitting by Rogers there. It's pretty cool to see them grow up and so be here right in Colorado, same time of year, different game. Man, uh, Game Time Stars is a program loaded with talent. Pitch missed, going to ask for help on the swing. No swing is the call on the first baseline appeal. Miranda Price, Texas Bombers goal. Wearing one of those commemorative shirts, the For the Fallen presentation by Texas Bombers between games today here at Christopher Field. Solid shot. Price going to go for two. Head first to the bag. Throw sails in. High but well played at the plate. Hannah Dossett leaping, tagging out at the plate, keeping the score 1-0. And good recovery out there by Taylor Lynch, the second baseman. We've seen her offensively all day from the game before. And Chooses not to get in front of that ground ball that's hit to her at second base, and Dossett makes the tag on a throw that's a little bit up the line. A nice play, though, of recovery by Taylor Lynch to make that throw home to her catcher and keep that run from scoring. Helmet tag, and Reagan Rogers is out at the plate. Tough to get into a slide there because of the way that the catcher was moving up the line. I mean, you'd like to say you got to get down, but that's, that's a tough read coming yeah. in with the ball flying, the catcher jumping. You don't really know where to go, where your seam is. And of course, nobody here is trying to get dinged up or crash into anybody in this All-American game. Well, you can't get really down if you're about 20 feet away from the plate. Not 20, <laughs> but 10 feet away yeah. from the plate. And Not many choices at that point. Yeah. So the runner cut down at the plate on a defensive recovery play. And it's Rachel Minogue now with the next chance to swing it for the blue All-American squad. Hits it firmly, but right to center field, and that will end the bottom of the third out in center field. Ashley Morris makes the catch. We're through three innings of the seven inning ball game. The Red All-Americans lead it 1-0 in Colorado. Back in Colorado, where 
Hashtag could mean a few different things, but in this case, hashtag I play TCS. Every year, Sparkler and Fireworks have trending power. You can get in the game, use hashtag I play TCS. Get in the conversation. Social media blowing up as this All American game unfolds. National television, our pitcher for the top of the fourth inning is Brooke Vestal. Brooke, a 2018 high school grad. So just getting ready to start her sophomore year. One of the youngest players on the field tonight. Vestal pitches the fourth. One of the youngest. How about the fact that she started a fundraiser in the name of Sergeant Thomas Spitzer, who lost his life in action, gathers donations for each strikeout she throws this year. Proceeds are going to go to help the service members and their families. Yeah, we saw that shot of her jersey, the back of the jersey for Vestal has the commemoration of the fallen service person or police or fire fighter. Police officer, firefighter, not a police fighter. I guess I should clarify that. Proper terminology that bombers Vestal plays for, for the fallen connection. And I mentioned that earlier. They conducted a ceremony between our games tonight here, between the National Power Showdown and the All-American game. Not dry in the house as uh, some fallen soldiers were recognized tonight. Their families brought to the field, presented with jerseys, and thanked for their contributions. And of course, again, in this Independence Week, this weekend, Independence Day coming. Time to take some time to remember those who've done so much and given ultimately to get us where we're at to celebrate independence. We play the top of the fourth now in this All-American game. And Brooke Vestal throwing to Olivia Gott behind the plate of Gold Coast Hurricanes. Rachel Minogue at first, Sarah Ratcliffe at second. Third base is Bella Jankowski. A walk pitch to the leadoff batter, Shannon Rhodes of Texas Glory. Shannon Rhodes on base with the walk. Finish that defense for the blue team. Jankowski at third. Shortstop is Ivy Davis. Left field, Miranda Price. Center field, Kylan Becker. And right field, Reagan Rogers. Reagan, who we just showed you last inning, had that home run a couple of years ago in a televised game, had a single last inning. She'll play right. Anna Epling of NC Lady Lightning steps in the box with nobody out. Runner on one off the leadoff walk to Shannon Rhodes. Shannon Rhodes, who played in our previous game tonight, the television game for Texas Glory. Rhodes walked right there. She was hit by a pitch twice in the previous game, so she's gotten on base yeah. three times on free passes. Once a walk, twice HBPs tonight. In what might be her only at bat at this All American game. Again, batting 30 players up and down the lineup. So the top of the order may get back around, but it's hard to get two ABs in this format of the game, a pure showcase opportunity. Anna Epling will be followed by Alexis Perry of Oklahoma Exclusive Gold. Ball knocked head first is going to get down. Runner had to wait. Pretty smart play there by Rachel Minogue. Couldn't get the catch on a knuckleball liner toward her, but picked it up and was able to get the lead runner off first. Yeah, I really like the way that Minogue just stayed with that play. It kind of surprised her a little bit off of her glove. You can tell she didn't backhand that, but she just stayed calm and still was able to make the force out at second base. It's a and tough throw around that runner headed to second. Yeah, yeah it's a visual distraction going on. Anna Epling on by fielder's choice with Alexis Perry now batting. about that look for Alexis is white pants with the trim down the sides. It's a pretty classic look. Looks like a player in the box. Good swing to pull off that just a little bit. It's in a tough spot. It's going to drop in the triangle in right center. The runner will move up one base. Lead runner Anna Epling to second. Alexis Perry a bloop single brings Brianna Hogan to the plate. Brianna of Mackensite Storm bats now. You know, a team where you don't know the other players and you've never practiced together. This is one of the toughest plays. That ball that just kind of lands in the hole. I mean, that's one of the toughest plays for a team that plays together day in and day out. Practice it all the time. And these players, obviously, you know, you know the, the basics. It's center field priority and all those things you're told. But, yeah, you get a live moment like that. And you mainly trying again not to, to crack Run into heads. each other, yeah. <laughs> You just don't know the speed of the other players and how much ground that they can cover and what you can take. The ball, no, that one's gonna side spin its way back. Looks like it might go foul. It stayed fair. 
ground out. Brianna Hogan is out for two away in the top of the fourth. And Jordy Vorbrink, the Louisville Lady Sluggers, she's got a few fans on hand tonight. Loud, loud uh, round of applause as this batter comes to the plate. I wanted to mention also uh, our catcher right now, putting that mask back on behind the plate, Olivia Gott, Gold Coast Hurricanes, wearing number 88. Last time we saw an 88 playing here on this field in our televised games, that was another 88 for Gold Coast. Went on to play at Florida and win a couple of national titles. Bailey Castro. Bailey Castro. A little trivia for you. Amanda's right on it. You uh, spent a little time in Oklahoma City again this yeah. year. Had a good time at the Women's College World Series. A chance to see Bailey and her teammates. Just what, the third program to go back to back? Is that right? Arizona, yeah. UCLA, and now Florida, Florida, the only other one who's done that to go back to back titles. The Women's College World Series. Congratulations to Tim Walton and the Gators. Swing and a miss on a strong pitch. Goldberg swung and missed. I think that's like 66 miles per hour on the gun. Yeah, and you can tell that she has some velocity back behind her pitches because of how many. These hitters are getting jammed. Some weird hits off the, the inside part of the bat. 65 again on the radar, radar gun. Think about how she's just a 2018 and she's already throwing 65, 66 miles an hour. Should only gain a little bit of speed before she heads to Oklahoma. Fouled away, hanging in there, Jordan Vorgren. See her smile and she says, What's the one thing that we must say about you? And she said, Every time people see me on the field, I have a big smile. <laughs> I go out there and, and have fun, bring some life to the field. Brooke Vestal, the pitcher, sending in a 2 2 pitch, got a swing and a strikeout. Good inning by the 2018 high school grad, young player in this game, committed to Oklahoma. Center favorite player, Shelby Penley, by the way. We talked a lot about Lauren Chamberlain being identified by so many players as their favorite. Shelby Penley. Wow, what a career for her and yeah. hanging up some home run numbers along with her teammate Chamberlain. And there's Vestal representing the, well, that's the future of Oklahoma. Vestal out of New Braunfels, Texas, throws a solid top of the fourth. We go to the bottom of the fourth, still 1-0. And Shelby Penley playing a little bit of everywhere now. She pitched a little bit at Oklahoma and playing all the infield positions now for the USSA Pride over in the NPI. Yeah, Chamberlain and Penley both go to the USSA Pride. We'll go down to the Diamond and check back in with Amanda Free. Hi, Thad and Amanda. Thank you. And you had just mentioned this last half inning how the communication when you're in a game like this, when you've got a bunch of all-stars who haven't played with each other most likely, or at least not next to each other in the field, it's difficult to come up with those communication situations right off the bat. So we've seen some CNI balls drop in the outfield, but we've also seen some very good relay plays where these athletes are just relying on blind communication and knowledge of the game. So something that's testing them today, but we're really seeing the athletic ability and their versatility in the field. Hey Amanda, while you're down there, I'm curious, what's the what generally what's the vibe right now, Amanda, in those dugouts? What what's your sense of the experience for these players? Oh, they're having fun. I mean, they're not putting a lot of pressure on this game. It just looks like they're happy to be out here. I mean, you get one at bat, you got everything, you know, you can with that at bat and no, they're getting out, miss hitting, but they're still smiling coming down the bases, and that's what this game's all about. All right, thanks for your work down in the bleachers and dugouts. And did you did you get a chance to get the bunny interview? Did you, did you catch the bunny on the way out? Our rabbit that took off off the field. <laughs> hoping uh, maybe Amanda's out there right now trying to track down <laughs> one of the stars of the show to this point. Ashley Coleman will pitch now. Plays for American Pastime Gold out of California. Ashley Coleman pitches now, just graduated high school, and will head to Cal Baptist for her college softball and academic experience. Interesting with these college coaches coaching the game, Christina Bardwell is going to step in the box, plays for TXFC Gold. Christina Bardwell leads off our bottom of the fourth. College coaches who are out there guiding the dugouts. This ball is swung on first pitch, laser to left. That was gone if the reach wasn't there, but the reach is there in left field. Bailey Baldwin with the left hand throw, right hand glove, goes tall to rob one. And a good barrel to the ball. What a nice swing by Bina Bardwell. That's what they call her, Bina. And she actually 
has a titanium plate and screws in her face from getting hit in this tournament two years ago. I actually coached her, saw that actually happen, and always had a good swing. She's headed off to University of Texas. Bailey Baldwin turns in a fantastic defensive play. That ball was on her quickly. That was a rocket. And that was tall enough to get over the home run fence. But not with Bailey Baldwin standing in front of it. Baldwin playing left. Brianna Hogan has center. Megan Harris has right this inning. Clifton at shortstop for her first time. Kaylee Clifton playing short. Her first inning of defensive assignment there. Alexis Perry at third. Second base is Alex Dufour. Ashley Doyle at first. Anna Epling is catching Ashley Coleman as Asia Weber bats. Left-handed swing for Asia Weber of Tulsa Elite. Help for Ashley Coleman, who I'm sure off the bat she was a little concerned about that <laughs> departure. Yeah. And she gets some D. Good swing by Asia Weber for foul. Yeah, you pretty much know out of your hand as a pitcher if somebody's going to be able to hit the pitch that you're delivering pretty hard. It's <laughs> kind of a feel thing. You just kind of know out of your hand, like, uh oh, what's going to happen with this one? And then your defense makes a play back behind you. It's kind of that sinking feeling, and then it goes away. 2-2 pitch is up and the adjustment up by Weber. She lobs this again deep toward the fence this time in right and that is caught by Megan Harris. Two away, two balls that have been hit fence distance and two outs. And she sits back on a changeup. You can see her kind of load back because it's still up in the zone and just slow enough that Weber is able to get a good barrel to the ball on that changeup that's left up. Asia Weber, by the way, uh, we don't want to get Amanda Freed on this one. Asia told us that she can clap with one hand. I don't want to see that. You know, you're trying it, aren't you? I mean, you can't, <laughs> can't help yourself. So we might want to send Amanda Freed on a, a, a high-level journalism assignment right now to go <laughs> get with Asia Weber and find out exactly what that looks like and sounds like when she claps with one hand. And uh, Asia Weber, congratulations to her on overcoming some obstacles. Tore her ACL, got recruited by Oklahoma State the next summer and has committed to Oklahoma State. Asia looking at Stillwater for her future playing days. Coleman with two outs off of a couple of good swings by the Blue All-American team, but nothing to show for it as Sarah Ratcliffe of East Coast Firecrackers bats. So Ratcliffe has a 3-0 count. He's talking about Florida and Oklahoma State actually has a new head coach, Kenny Gajewski, who was the assistant over at Florida, and now he's going to be over in Stillwater. Now, was he at Oklahoma when Tim Walton was there? Or not? I think so, yeah. So might, I think they're back, baseball buddies, yeah. That close to the mm -hmm. where it all began. Floater on a 3 1 pitch that stays up and a walk issued to Sarah Ratcliffe. She's on first with one away, and Kylan, or make it two away. And Kylan Becker of Miami Stingrays will that. And as we have two outs and a batter coming in, and Kylan Becker with one on, we're back down with Amanda Free. So I found Asia Weber, and apparently she can do something very talented that we're going to have her explain to us, but you can clap with one hand. Is that right? Okay. Well, we want to see it. <laughs> She's hands, but they're individually, so technically it's two hands, two claps. Good job. Oh. Ouch. There's a ball tossed in the middle of the infield. They're thinking about sending the runner in the middle cut there. Keeps anybody from moving, so the first baseman, Ashley Doyle, stepped in and took that throw. Keeps the runner at first and the runner from scoring. And moving around to third base, Sarah Ratcliffe and Kylan Becker is on safely off of the misplayed infield ball. And here is the number 88, wearing Bailey Castro's old number for the Gold Coast Hurricanes. Wearing it very well, Olivia Gott, fine player in her own right, representing that 88. Splendidly for the Gold Coast Hurricanes, representing her team in this All-American game. Olivia with two outs and two on. Okay, so did that? Oh, you tried that one-hand clap just a minute ago. Yeah, you're doing more wrists. She was. Does she have no bones in the middle of her hand? I don't know. <laughs> she has. Real, she's loose in her hand, yeah. and I think that that oh. is able to create the clap. Runner, I think I'm too tight. Yeah. Now you got a little bit of work to do, but it'll, it'll get there. I'll just keep working at it. It's all a process, right? Yeah. Well, I know, you, I know your commitment. I, mean, I know you, you will stay with it until it yeah. happens. So we trust that by tomorrow's double yeah, header, you'll have, to, you'll have the one hand clap down. Good job, Amanda Freed. That's any award winning recording right oh, there. Oh, for sure, yeah. 
Is uh, Amanda freed? Are you able to clap with one hand? Oh, well, you know, no, but that would have been a very um, helpful thing, I think, if you're a pitcher, don't you think, Amanda? Yeah, you have one glove on, and then you need to give yourself a little bit of applause out there in the circle. I mean, it's all about us in the circle anyway, so. <laughs> Here's a two-out, two-one pitch, going to be a three-one count. Amanda Freed, I think. Maybe referring to, is that something to do with gripping the ball, with having that kind of hand flexibility? Oh, sorry, Amanda. I, I mean, as I was thinking about, like, the looseness of a wrist, I was thinking of a pitcher, and then I was also thinking about, like, clapping and a performance or something. So, sorry, my mind was, like, going two different ways with it. But, yes, you're loose in your wrist. Can you imagine what kind of pitcher that you would be with that kind of spin? Walk to Olivia Dot loads the bases with two down. What a great opportunity here for Ivy Davis. Now, this is fun. All-American game bases loaded. You yeah. get a chance to hit. I was kind of thinking with that clapping with one hand, the way she did it with two hands, you can double the crowd size at any time. You can sound like two people for the price of one <laughs> human. I know. Interesting where my mind went for that. It was just it's also very interesting the kinds of things that emerge as, as fun stories. That is all American game. I mean, every year we kind of have something. Haley McClenney a few years back was telling us about her 12,000 Twitter followers while she was playing right field. And uh, kind of got to know Haley back in the day there, and Haley has gone on to do nothing but shine in her college career. Yeah, absolutely. Trying to get out of this jam right here in the bottom of the fourth, leading 1-0 the Red All-American team, but they're under duress. Nice play at first base. That was going to score at least a couple, if not three. But the glove of Ashley Doyle gets in the way. Well done. Unassisted stop at first base. And Innings played, three more to go. Red All-American team leads 1-0 over the blue. Hey, spend your 4th of July weekend with CBS Sports Network. The toughest riders and fiercest bulls are on display all day Friday and Saturday. PBR Star Spangled Marathon starting Friday morning, 10 a.m. Eastern, right here on the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Revolving door of pitchers revolves to Morgan Bruce of Lady Lightning. Morgan Bruce has the circle for the top of the fifth inning. Morgan Bruce pitching to Lauren Buchanan this inning. It's a swing and a foul off to start the top of the fifth. Bruce to Buchanan at first base is Jade Gondera. Bailey Klingler playing second. Malia Martinez has third. Shortstop is Asia Weber. Mary Cranick in left. Carly Hamilton in center. And Madison Montgomery in right field. Lead off batter. Melissa DiCarlo of Firecrackers Blanco. DiCarlo, she said when she was younger, she didn't even want to step foot on the infield. And she played outfield until she was a junior for club. And then she started playing shortstop when she was a sophomore during her high school year. Back up the middle it goes. Base hit. Alyssa DiCarlo starts off the top of the fifth. With a solid middle single, bringing Berkeley Callup of TC Stars Gold to the plate. 
love that she was able to conquer that fear. And clearly, good infielder we've seen her here in this game, and as well as coming up with a base hit. Melissa DiCarlo on first base, her favorite fast pitch player, Lauren Hager. Speaking of the Gators, featured right over next to us, right? Yeah. Lauren uh, made her way back and back on the ball field for the NPF, and they're playing right next to us right now. NPF featuring the Dallas Charge and the Akron Racers. Game three of their four game set in Colorado. They'll also be next to us tomorrow night at the Royal Sports Park. Another base knock, Berkeley Callick. Sends it to the right side and two aboard with nobody out for Taylor Ellis. Berkeley Callup of TC Stars Gold out of Fort Collins, Colorado. Proud of her brother Blake, who's a Marine. Sister McKenzie. Burr and Shannon, all part of the Calif family. They just saw Berkeley single in what's likely to be her only at bat of the All-American game and sets up Taylor Ellis with a great opportunity here. So first and second, and nobody out. Are we going to see a bunt? No, not, not a the, sacrifice. Not in the All -Star game. Yeah, not a sacrifice no for way. sure. <laughs> Taylor Ellis, I think she's the type of player that wants to hit, especially with the, the glove work that she had at shortstop earlier in this game. She's a player. A couple of pitches that she's taken on the outside corner, though, have been tough calls. Gone down early in this count. 64 miles per hour from Morgan Bruce. Taylor Ellis, a 2016 high school grad, got another year of high school before she heads to Baylor. And we got two wide. Two plates, nine screws, and a right ankle from a softball injury a couple of years ago. Played in the Little League World Series in 2011 to Taylor Ellis. Batting now in a 1-2 count. Moving the ball around. Ball gets loose, and runners are going to move up safely. Nobody out, second and third for the red team, already leading 1-0. Yeah, not a bad pitch right there by Morgan Bruce. She was working the outside part of the plate and then decides to go inside. But this is just a, a direct reflection right here of a catcher who's not knowing a pitcher and how tough it is really to get back there behind the plate and catch a pitcher that you don't know. Got to lock it up now. Runners on second and third. Right side. Going to come to the plate. Redemption. Nice play at first and a great tag at the plate. Immediate chance for Lauren Buchanan behind the plate to make amends. She does on the play at first base. The throw from Jade Gondera. What a play. I'm so impressed with the defensive plays that we've seen in this game. Usually I feel like it's the offense, but the defense is really stepping up, especially on the infield, to make these plays that are not easy at all. Nice tag of the plate there by the catcher, Warren Buchanan. Three to two. Tag play, too. That's not a force play at the plate. You got to get a lot done. Runners loping down towards second, going to pull up in the middle. They're not going to play her. They're going to concede the bag at second and keep Berkeley Callip at third. So Taylor Ellis did the uh, slow burn down to second base. She's in safely for Ber uh, Berkeley Faulkner batting. Faulkner bats with runners on second and third and one away. Berkeley Faulkner of Oklahoma Diamond Girls. Yeah, especially on a first and third play with a team that you've never played with. I mean, this is a pretty well run play defensively by a team that just kind of winged it. But nice throws cut off by the second baseman. And then I really liked her sharp throw across the diamond at third base. You can just really tell just athletically that these are really some all-stars in this tournament with the way that they field the ball, with the way that they have just great solid throws, and that they really trust each other, knowing that they're playing with some great athletes out there. This ball is off the end of the bat, back behind the coach's box at third base, popped up and out at third base. It's Maria Martinez, out number two. If you love softball, you want Softball Magazine featuring hard-hitting editorials, tips and columns from the sports top players and coaches, new product features, player and team spotlights. Softball Magazine, America's source for softball news, and softballmag.com. Thanks to Softball Magazine, supporting the Triple Crown Sparkler and Fireworks. Pitch is in for strike one to Megan Harris. And Firecrackers DFW goal, Megan Harris batting. Her profile caught my eye because she's committed. She signed to go play at Ole Miss. 
And after she put Ole Miss, she put Hottie Toddy. Um, really the only <laughs> profile I've seen that actually puts something after the school that they're attending. But that's the kind of passion that Ole Miss has. And, yeah. and a school in the SEC that's really turning things around. It's like we talked about earlier, you're required to uh, ridden at least one bowl to live in Texas. Yeah. You have to say Hottie Toddy if you're going to yes. even try to go to Oxford. you got to uh, have that down. Even Mike Smith, the head coach there, will say it pretty much after every interview, too. Yeah, just saw him wander yeah. by between games, said hi to coach, got things off to a nice start at Ole Miss this year. I had a chance to go out and do one of their series against Mississippi State, actually, and they beat Mississippi State for the first time in quite a while, and uh, a lot Great of excitement. Yeah. Great series. Yeah, rainy deal out there. They moved the game up by a day, and, you know, all the normal stuff that you, you got to deal with, and the, the Ole Miss program handled it nicely. They start to point their arrow up in the SEC softball. Well done to the left side. A couple of times took a shot over there. Finally got one down. Ball bottled and left. One is going to score. A couple of them are going to score. And in the second, Megan Harris knocks in two, three, zero. On the American I like the way that Megan Harris looks up at the plate. Look at her just getting into contact. Ends up hitting a line drive. Oh goes to left field. Just trying to do a soft slap and find a hole. And Lands perfectly over there in left field to get a score a couple and now make the score three to nothing. Here's Megan Harris. Just got the job done. Drove in two. Made the scoreboard say 3-0. And Kelby Fortenberry of Texas Bombers wearing another one of those commemorative for the fallen shirts. Into the box now is Kelby Fortenberry. You were talking earlier about that first and third play and that good throw from second base. Bailey Klingler is playing second. Bailey a 2018 grad herself so another one of those very young players in our game tonight Bailey dad played pro football after playing at Houston played in the CFL and Arena League and her uncle David Klingler played in the NFL Bengals Raiders uncle Jeff Neal played for the others that's Bailey Klingler out of Alvin Texas part of a, an athletic line of success remember the old David Klingler quarterbacking days yeah, put some yards and points on the board and her sister Plays at University of Houston. Well, Bailey's getting ready to head off to Texas A&M, not for a couple more years as a 2018 grad, but she's going to go continue your uh, And so is the, the little lady up at the plate, too. <laughs> she's committed to go play at Texas A&M as well, Fortenberry. Kelby, yeah, Kelby Fortenberry, all part of the the Joe Evans machine. Is that fair? <laughs> yeah. Had a great time. I, I covered the... Uh, Oklahoma, Texas A&M, the Oklahoma Regional, and so I got a chance to spend some time with Patty Gasso and Joe Evans. Just really, you get a, you can really, when you spend, I mean, you know this well, you spend just a little bit of time around these people, and you understand why these programs go where they go. And Joe Evans couldn't be more real. Mm -hmm. Patty Gasso the same way, yeah. but just phenomenal people. I mean, the minute you encounter them, they just have that warmth and that knowledge and, and uh, pretty impressive stuff. Oh. Great opportunities. Ball popped on the third base side. That's going to end in the glove over at third of Malia Martinez. Fortenberry pops out. Couple runs go up on the board on the hit from Megan Harris. 3 0 red. Sounds of the All-American game capped off by the 
sound of one hand clapping, two hands clapping separately, I guess was the real presentation there. Rio Sanchez, one of my favorite names in the All-American game this year. Rio Sanchez of Erie, Colorado. Colorado sticks. Her team shall pitch in this fifth inning. Rio out of Erie, Colorado. That's where the NPF played their game last night at the ballpark at Erie after playing in Greeley, Colorado on Monday night. Playing right next to us right now. NPF Akron Racers and Dallas Charge. And tomorrow they'll play in Aurora, Colorado. So four different towns in Colorado in four days on the barnstorming tour for the Charge and the Racers. <laughs> and Rio Sanchez. Getting us into the bottom of the fifth inning now, pitching for the red team with them leading 3 0. So Rio trying to protect that. Sydney Springfield, LSU, is where she'll carry on with her college career. Sydney swings, chops at the third. Berkeley Callip makes a nice play, and out number one. Callip at third, throws across to Alexis Allen at first. In the middle infield this inning, it's Aubrey Leach at second. And Taylor Ellis at short, the outfield and left Fortenberry. Center field is Bailey Baldwin, and right field is Ashley Morris as Rio Sanchez pitches to Berkeley Faulkner. Sydney Springfield grounded out, now Carly Hamilton bats. Love that. A lot of things on Rio Sanchez's profile. What do you want to be when you grow up? Someone who's happy, successful, and just a good person in general. And she's actually not committed yet. She lists some schools that she'd like to attend. So Oregon, Nebraska, Washington, UNLV, UTEP, Fullerton. But then she put, or any school that I feel at home yet, at home at. My ultimate goal is to get a degree. Gotta love that mentality mm. all around about Rio Sanchez. Causes you to want to tip your cap to parents Nick and Felicia. Obviously you've done a nice job raising this talented pitcher in the circle right now. 2017 grad Rio about to start her junior year of high school. Not about to. I don't want to make anybody feel like their summer's almost over. Right. These kids are, they don't want to think I'm about to start it. I just got done with my previous school year. Right. <laughs> 60 miles per hour out of the hand of number 27, Rio Sanchez. Ball is locked to left and laying down onto the grass in Colorado. A nice landing and the catch is made. Strong play in left field, Kelby Fortenberry. And Fortenberry has some good speed and clearly gets a good react off of this ball going straight for it. And in an All-American type of game, why not just go ahead and lay out for everything? Whether it's towards the line, away from the line, just go all out. Nice catch by Kelby. Two outs. At the bottom of the fifth. It's Jade Gandera, Hemet, California, plays for Miners Gold. Jade's sister, Cheyenne. Jade pops it up shallow. Center fielder coming on, catching it again at the dirt and grass intersection. Jade and sister Cheyenne played in this game in 2013. Now chosen for her All-American opportunity. Pops out into the fifth. 3-0 red. Team has three, the blue team zero. Into the sixth inning, it's a scheduled seven inning ball game. 11 hits mixed between the two teams, but all three runs to the red squad. This is the second game of our doubleheader tonight on CBS Sports Network. Our national power showdown already happened. This is the All American game, and 
Join us again tomorrow. Fast pitch softball. The Sparkler Futures Championship game will be featured on CBS Sports Network, the 24 hour home of CBS Sports at 6 o'clock Eastern. Sparkler Futures Championship game. Thad Anderson with Amanda Scarborough. We will be with you tomorrow for that game, plus another one, the 16 and under Power Pool Championship, also from Aurora, Colorado, tomorrow after that Futures Championship. And Amanda Freed will be with us again, roaming the bleachers and the dugouts and may bring her into the booth and have her join us for a three person sit down for parts of that activity tomorrow pop up to start the top of the sixth and Amanda Freed she's doing October she's got her daughter here and her husband her daughter Abby and her husband Joe hanging out in Colorado she's coaching it's Amanda Freed so we're thinking about maybe getting her off her feet for a little while tomorrow <laughs> she's such a trooper yeah she's pretty awesome you know Amanda down there roaming around and uh, we just saw and at bat for top of the sixth start off by Bailey Baldwin. Now Kaylin Arnold, who pitched the first inning for the red team. She's in the batter's box. Shaney Starkey, double zero pitching. Texas rapid fire gold goes up with the pitch and gets it through the bat of Kaylin Arnold, Tennessee Fury. So Kaylin, favorite player of Amanda Scarborough, Kaylin came up here and said hi to you after yeah, that interview cool. with Amanda Freed. And you talked briefly. I don't know if you got anything accomplished. Would you would you guys get a chance to chat about quickly there? Kaylin Arnold grounds it back to the pitcher. Starkey plays it to her. Then I felt that she did awesome. And if she needs anything, she can feel free to holler at me whenever she needs to. And I like it. Two away and Maribeth Gorsuch is the next batter with two down at the top of the six. Let's get back down there with Amanda Free. Situation. It was pretty great. It's just everyone gets to see the catch, and it felt good. I mean, <laughs> nothing much you can say about it. And what does it mean for you to be able to wear the jersey like this and then perform like that and represent, you know, our lost and fallen um, soldiers and heroes? It's such an honor because without the men out there fighting for us, we wouldn't be able to play here. And it's just, it's unbelievable to be able to wear this jersey. There's words for it. Well, congratulations, nice catch. Thank Good you. luck, you're welcome. Kelby Fortenberry laid out in left field in the bottom of the fifth. Her team now batting in the top of the sixth, leading 3-0. Thanks to Kelby and all the players for letting us poke around down there, get a little more information from them, and celebrate the various reasons to enjoy this All-American game. Two out, one, two pitch. Interesting now with Shaney Starkey pitching and Emily Erickson catching. Let's watch this again. Last time Erickson did what I remember Janelle Linval did so well. She pounds the glove before the pitch, but she flashed the location. It's, oh man, take a look and show us what you see here. Yeah, she'll do it right before the pitch is going to happen, right there. Just give her a little flash to the glove, too, and then she'll set. Got to like that. That tells me as a pitcher that she's into it, that she's ready, especially that little pop at the end. A lot of times you'll see firecracker catchers do that. As a pitcher, did you like a frozen target or just a, a show? Did you like to have a glove sitting where you want to throw it for a, a long period of time? Ball grounded right side, played nicely, 4-3 put out. And the sixth inning in the top of the six moves quickly. The blue team wipes them out. We'll talk more about your uh, observations of that, Amanda, as the blue team comes back down by three.
Bottom of the sixth, seven inning game. The home team trailing 3-0. Blue All-American team coming back to bat in Colorado. Sun setting, beautiful time in Colorado. You can get in the game. More information on Triple Crown Sports events. Ooh, wow. Happy Halloween. TripleCrownSports.com is the website. Whatever your games, softball, basketball, baseball, volleyball, treat your team right, destination locations, signature memories, professional staff. Get in the game at TripleCrownSports.com. Start off the bottom of the sixth inning with the Blue All-American team sending Madison Montgomery into the box. It swings and it foul the other way. Saw Montgomery play in our game earlier tonight, the National Power Showdown. Enjoyed watching her again. A few different times she's been on the televised games. Knocked in a couple of runs and walking a single in that National Power Showdown with Maddie Sue Montgomery. Veronica Golvin of Bonette. Golvin is scheduled to pitch a couple of innings here. This ball lifted to left. Is made by Jordan Vorbrink in left field. The outfielders Vorbrink, Allison McGovern in center, Brianna Hogan in right. The infield is Tierra Follow at first, Mallory Belknap at second, third base is Alyssa DiCarlo, and the shortstop Hitler Donaldson playing defense behind Veronica Golden, the pitcher right there, was throwing to Hannah Dossett. Dossett, the catcher, and it was Hannah Dossett who made that leaping tag play at the plate earlier to cut down a run on a throw in from right field. And Dawson's back, uh, Dossett is back in there. Start taking a peek at the batter, Malia Martinez. That was an interesting camera shot we had there. So you get a catcher working with a pitcher they've never met before. Seeing a hitter they haven't seen much of, but she's checking out her stance or positioning in the box. See what they might want to do with her. Setting up inside here. And, uh, oops, from Malia Martinez, fouled it back. And Dossett, the catcher, Signed with Syracuse and then Golvin, the pitcher at UCSB. Talk about two opposite ends of the country right there. Covering it all. <laughs> From corner to corner. Well, you know, and I wanted to ask you about obviously there's a lot of discussion going on about the distribution of talent and skill now in the college game and the emergence of the SEC. And you, of course, among other things, covered heavily the SEC this year. 2-2 pitch, it's fouled away. What are you seeing in, in the distribution of talent to change in the way the game is, is, is getting played right now? Because Amanda Fried is with us. She spent a lot of time on the Pac-12 side of things, still a very talented conference, but the SEC has really grabbed the reins. Yeah, and it really is still talented over in the Pac-12, but you can't deny the fact that five of the eight teams in the Women's College World Series were from the SEC. And tying a record, actually, that the Pac-10 had set back in 99, I think it was. and eight teams and super regionals so that the numbers of teams that are just going deep into the postseason kind of speak for itself with the success that the SEC is having and the amount of crowds that they get and the facilities that the SEC has is really uh, you, you can't really compare it to anything else in the country. Amanda Freed, what are you seeing in the evolution of the college game and the distribution of the, uh, the talent and the, the success of programs? Well, I think it's starting at this level. I think we're seeing so many girls coming up it's, and they're talented and they're able to go anywhere across the country. So a lot of the girls from California and, you know, those West Coast states that were historically the most talented would stay there. But now they're traveling and more girls are developing across the country. Our game has so much widespread talent. It's exciting. And, and that's why there's so much parity now. And it, it's neat to see the SEC come up strong like they are and the Pac-12 still strong, but the other big conferences also. And it just gives these girls so many more opportunities to go to different places. Well, I think really too, Amanda, it, it, you just start to compete. The conferences start to compete with each other and really they just make each other better. So if this is the, the level that the SEC is going to be at, well, all the other conferences are going to have to try to get up to that level. And all around, it just grows our entire sport, which is awesome to see. 3-2 pitch, several foul offs by the Leah Mar Martinez. And then she blasts a tall fly ball to center field. That is caught for out number two, fly out to center field. And Mia Williams scheduled to bat next. The center fielder, Allison McGovern, made the catch. Mia Williams of TXFC Gold steps in. It was a big deal for Oregon to retain Mike White at Arkansas came calling pretty strongly to try to pull one of the Pac-12's best away to the SEC, but Oregon manages to retain their head coach. But yeah, you're talking about the SEC. They're uh, they are fully committed 
All those programs are battling it out. All the boats are rising. You've got a race to stay up. And uh, there's some people in Eugene concerned about maybe losing their head coach off to the SEC, but they pretty excited about what's next with the new stadium coming online. And That's going to help in itself. Oregon and the commitment that they made to Mike White and the stadium and the money that they're putting in their softball program. 0 1 count to Ania Williams. Ania pitched the second inning for the blue team. Not surrender a run. Can't correct that. I guess one run now. One run did come in. Haley Donaldson scored in that inning. One of the three runs scored by the red team. So Nia Williams finally with her chance to bat here in this 30 person batting order. She'd like to help make up for that and maybe a little more. She can get on base and set up an inning, but again, quickly two outs. The pace really both ways, but the, the red team, the visiting team, their defensive half innings have been speedy. Yeah. In and out, in and out. Yeah, that's why it's been so depress uh, or impressive defensively. Just the plays that these players are making and kind of just playing fearless out there on defense. Really nothing to lose. It's kind of a fun game and you can just tell there's not as much weight on their shoulders to have to make a play that is of so much importance. Red defense first inning three up three down. Fifth inning three up three down. Those are the only two clean frames and they won't have one here. A hit by pitch. So down to first base goes Ania Williams. She waited around in the box. I think she was not really wanting to take a free base. She thought maybe, yeah, let's don't call that. Hey, my pitch, let me just stay here and hit. Yeah, I think she was definitely hoping that the umpire didn't see that one. Trying to play it off. <laughs> Shelby McGlone. We're in the pitcher part of the order now. Always the Amanda's favorite part of the lineup. Yeah, two way players. Love it. They and are, Amanda Freed both love it. They're placed at the bottom of the order since they get showcased in the circle and get big exposure that way. These pitchers all bat at the bottom of the order in the All American game. Foul ball down the line was picked up in foul territory by Tierra Fallo. Shelby McGlon mentioned her Oreos and Bryce Harper affinities. It's her back. On our screen now in the batter's box, a 2017 high school grad. Baylor's where she's going to be headed in a couple of seasons. She wanted us to call her Goose. So go ahead. And <laughs> Shelby's, Shelby's nice, but I'm Goose. Isn't that a Top Gun name? That is. And I actually saw a player or two who said their favorite movie was Top Gun. It's a good movie. <laughs> What do you like about that? It was not Goose McGlone's favorite movie. This was When the Game Stands Tall. My wife also a big fan of Top Gun. I'm okay with that. I don't feel threatened at all. That throw drills the middle umpire. And Doug Livingston, probably not anything well. What it did cause was the runner moving from uh, first to second. I can't say that I've ever seen that before happen. Dodgeball. Ever. Yeah, usually, I, I don't know. What usually happens when there's a, a ball to right field and she's throwing across the diamond in terms of how I've never seen it hit the umpire before, but definitely gets hit in his backside. Didn't even know it was coming. Shelby McGlawn, solid single, great swing, and then a great read. You could see right there on the replay. She saw the ball hit the umpire and took off from first base as soon as she realized yeah. that that was going to be loose as opportunistic taking the extra base. Pitcher's trying to get it done at the bottom of the order, getting on base and trying to have a two out rally here. Blue team with two down. There's McGlone off of her single. She watches his throw, sees it. Pelt. It was Doug Livingston who was working the middle right there and uh, took the bag. Amanda Freed just had to dodge that foul ball down there. Heads up, Amanda. She's hanging out down by the first base camera well. No, you still got it. We saw you. You look good doing that. There's nothing awkward or anything about that. Athletically dodged. 
And we got onto the players for running away. And <laughs> Amanda, we're going to need to see you stay in front of that the next time. You know you're supposed to bring your glove to the park. <laughs> glove, Mike, got it. Check, check. One hand clap, we're on it. <laughs> Brooke Vestal from Texas Bombers Gold. Big ad bat right here with two on. Long ball ties it, worth noting, in the Colorado air. Vestal measures it up and takes that pitch out at 62 miles per hour, one and two count now. Veronica Golvin works her frame and a docile behind the plate. Golvin scheduled to pitch again in the bottom of the seventh. She gets herself through the sixth, and she will be a two-inning pitcher tonight. Golvin works off the hook with this strikeout pitch. Final frame of the Sparkler Fireworks All-American game. 3-0, red on top of the blue, red batting. Now, there's a lot of reasons to come to the Sparkler Fireworks, but if nothing else, that's it right there. Just come for that scenery. One of, one of my favorite things, sunset, mountains, can't beat it. You don't even have to pay for that. No, you just sit wherever you want. <laughs> Stare off to the west. Sun setting over the Rocky Mountains in Colorado. Amanda Scarborough next to me. I'm Thad Anderson and Amanda Freed down on the diamond reporting for us. Both Amandas, we again thank you and appreciate you being with us, being part of this celebration of softball. It's fun. Well, that's good. It's a bonus. Well, the pink socks being rocked in the batter's box to start the top of the seventh. Each of the seventh inning pitchers are the only pitchers who were assigned two innings tonight. Veronica Golden for the red team and Shaney Starkey pitching her second inning. Dream job, special education. Shaney Starkey for that career aspiration. My uh, mom, my sister, both longtime teachers. Great appreciation for those who choose to educate. Not a great way to get rich quick. If you're talking money, you got a good way to get rich quick in a lot of other ways. Oh, yeah. So rewarding. Ball driven to right, well hit, lined out for out number one. It was Rio Sanchez on the blast. Uncommitted player right there. Good bear of the ball. For a nice, nice inning of work. That line out to right field. Kylan Becker of Miami Stingrays makes the catch. Reagan Rogers plays center. Madison Montgomery in left. William Martinez has shortstop. Carson Gordon third. Sarah Ratcliffe at second. Rachel Nova first here in the seventh inning. And Shaney Starkey pitching to Olivia Gott. The catcher in the seventh inning. So now. 
Veda Cheryl of Lady Lightning Bats. Veda Cheryl. Nicole Teague, worth noting, this is Veda Cheryl right here on your screen. Nicole Teague of East Coast Firecrackers was selected for this game, but has an injury, not able to play. But our congratulations to Nicole being selected for the All American game. Veda hits it to second, knocked down and out at first. Keeping the ball on the infield, finding a way. Out is reported on the play from Sarah Ratcliffe. Two down in the top of the seventh inning at the Sparkler Fireworks All-American Game. This All-American Game, one of the featured events, but so many things go on along with that beautiful sunset we just showed you. Champions Festival, National Pro Fast Pitch Games, one going on next to us right now. Pro and Olympic Player Clinics, College Camp Sunday, the TC Idol Singing Contest, and All-Star Games at Champions Festival. I want to double click on that with you uh, in a second here. Amanda Scarborough as this pitch sails in for a 56 mile per hour ball. You were uh, involved in that Champions Festival on was that Monday night. And they all blur together. I yeah. Know, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, I just stop and think. That's a pretty cool opportunity for young players to hear from champions of the game. Yeah, I was. That was awesome. I had never gotten a chance to do that before. And Amanda Freed was there as well. But just getting to be around the quote unquote champions that were there, Crystal Bustos, uh, who else? There? I mean, Amanda Freed, uh, Lori Harrigan. There's a, a lot of Olympians that were there, and of course, some other players who played collegiately and had success as well, and getting to interact with parents, coaches, and, and young players. Talking to them about stuff that's deeper than just how to hit a home run, how to throw a rise ball, but just the ins and outs of recruiting and how to stay positive and how confidence and what to, to think mentality for different technical parts of the game. A no small accomplishment. We got back to the top of the order here in the seventh inning for the first time. Second at bat of the game for Allison McGovern, and that's a strikeout. Good inning by Shaney Starkey. She throws two and keeps her team in the hunt. They've got one more chance to swing it. Last bat. Blue All-American team down 3-0. It's just getting better that sunset back there. This game is coming to a head right now. Bottom of the seventh inning, last chance for the All American Blue team down 3 0. There's some blue for you. Mixed into the oranges and the pinks and the yellows. Of the Colorado sky. On a beautiful sunset, start of July. A lot of uh, memories have happened in that dugout tonight. Players years from now, things they don't even notice they notice tonight. They'll remember in 20 years about little moments and details from this game. A lot of new friends out here too. Yeah. Exchange uh, whatever communication channel you prefer. Cell phone numbers kind of <laughs> bad, right? You don't do that anymore. Morgan, <laughs> Morgan Bruce is batting. And you know, one, one thing that I always, I always sigh a breath of relief is the red team got all the way through their order and actually their leadoff batter batted twice, but that was it. Everybody got one AV except the leadoff. And we're going to make it through the batting order for the blue team, too. They've got Morgan Bruce to be followed by Shaney Starkey and Michelle Benavides scheduled to bat in this inning, and that would take us right to the bottom of the 30-ish player order for the All-American blue team. So it's always just a matter of the mathematics of enough players getting on base to earn enough ABs and there's a leadoff walk no runs on the board yet for the blue team will that walk turn into something Morgan Bruce works her way on base Shaney Starkey who pitched the sixth and the seventh and got a three up three down sixth and a three up three down seventh 
clean six batters faced and a chance to hit for Shaney Starkey. Shaney signed to play at West Texas A&M 2014 D2 national champs. Very good D2 program for sure. Committed as a freshman in high school. Chops this. That's going to work. Everybody safe. Two aboard. Tying runs coming to the plate. And it's Rochelle Benavides of Texas Bombers Gold who will bat with Morgan Bruce aboard and Shaney Starkey off of this single. Just using the ground. Hard ground out there. Getting a good hop. Taking it to the deep part of the infield. Two runners on now. Top of the order, Aaliyah Wade waits on deck. Again, that's kind of irrelevant tonight. When you say top of the order, usually implies you know the best bats coming up. <laughs> yeah. Every bat in here is good. So Rochelle Benavides takes a key at bat, batting the very last spot of this long order. Waited all game long to the seventh, gets her chance. This game can end in a tie. Strike works its way, bearing down across the knees of Benavides. Sue Enquist uh, still heading up that Champions Festival effort the other night. A cool uh, link to some of the, the best of the game right there with Coach Enquist in the mix. Yeah, Time Ivy. was granted there, no pitch. Ivy and Ellen Renfro were there as well. Nicole Tromboldi, who actually played at Nebraska. Michelle Gascoigne, who just finished up her career a couple of years ago, seasons ago at Oklahoma. Morgan Stewart, Nicole Schroeder, Katie Schroeder, a couple of UCLA and then Washington alums. 0 2 pitch coming. Player out there, you want you want to win. From our yeah. perspective, the All American Game, so much talent out here, so many great stories. A tie, you know, a tie seems kind of fitting to me, don't you think? <laughs> Hang up three here, and everybody goes home. Well, they don't all go, go home happy. We all kind of feel good about that, right? Yeah, I don't think that these type of players out here are so competitive. I don't think a tie is okay with them. I still think, especially you're up three to nothing, you're out there, you're wanting to win. You want to get the W for sure. Absolutely. Veronica Golden in her second inning of pitching now. Number five in the circle. Golden's pitch. Again, fouled away. Nice deep at bat by Rochelle Benavides. She's making the most of her weight, battling with that 0 2 count. Had all that time to sit there and watch all of her teammates go up to bat, knowing that she was the last one, not even knowing if she was going to get in at bat. Now she has a chance. That pitch bounces in. Runners can't move. But for all the pitches that have been thrown in this at bat, that's the first ball. One and two count. Golden attacking the strike zone. Benavides staying alive. Finally, fourth run ball one. Two aboard, one two count. And two two count. Golden here is pitching to Anna Epling, the catcher. Maribeth Gorsuch is playing first. Taylor Lynch at second. Shannon Rhodes third. Kaylee Clifton is at short. Ashley Morris in left. Megan Harris at center. Kelby Fortenberry in right field. Diving try. Ball gets loose. Runners had to wait. Force out chance, but thrown away. Blue team is on the board. Runners are at first and second and to the plate. Comes Morgan Bruce, three to one. We've seen so many good defensive plays out there, and this one had a chance, and then another chance right there to be able to make it out. An important out late in this game, especially with the three-run lead, but an error causing a run to score. But great effort there by Shannon Rhodes to lay out for that ball and almost, almost grabbing it. Epling just kind of over gripped that throw, held on to it too long, and spiked it wide into foul ground. 3-1 the score. Bunt put down. Lead runner taken. So a fielder's choice on the bunt. Force out. Five to six. Nice defensive rotation left side. 
A good job right there by Rhodes to recover after diving for that ball, not getting it, but just being ready for the next play to make the force out. Clifton snuck in behind from shortstop, was there for the force play. 3 1 the score. Blue now with the tying run on and the winning run at the plate. Amber Surrett. It's an all American game. It's a showcase. It's a memory game. There's a strike pitch. 1 1 count. How about having that in your memory banks? A walk off three run jack in yeah. Colorado. That'd be. Uh, one for the ages. Surrett has that opportunity, but facing some good.